Hey guys, how you doing? Just thought I'd do a video here, um, which I'm going to call Understanding the Loss. Um, this is, video is basically designed for, you've been losing a few games, you can't quite figure out why, you don't know where the, where the shortcomings are on your team, you, you don't know what it is that's causing the issues. Uh, now, like I said before in my uh, tactics thread, you can go through to each of the individual fixtures and you can have a look and see you know where your where your team let you down, where the bad passing was, and and I'm not trying to say that you should win every single game, but you know there are some games when you know you should be winning and you haven't. Uh, first thing, really, I'd say you need to do is get as much information as you can. Like I said you can go through each individual game and get the information, but it's a very long process because it takes you know between. 20 seconds, 30 seconds upwards for each analysis to be loaded, and then you'd have to write the information down. Um, first thing that you can do, well, this is the screen that most people will normally have. It will tell you the player's name, position, morale, last five games, what his current condition is, how many appearances he has, goals, and average rating. That's probably the most common one people use. You can use general info, but that doesn't really tell you anything about selecting your player. You go to maybe assistant reports. Well, that would pretty much just tell you what his best position is and his personality, and you know what his what his potential is and what he's recommended. But that doesn't really tell you a ton of information. What you can actually do is if you go up to the window here, selection info, and go to custom, uh, it's worthwhile making a copy of your current view so you can play around with it. So you can then go back to in this case selection info. So we'll create a copy, uh, give it a name. So let's call it full info view. Okay, so we now have what's called full info view. Now we go into customs and we can now manage it. Now what you can do here is you can actually see what actually you can go to Customize current view. Sorry, that's what I wanted. So, this is the information that it will tell you. So, position selected, which is that one. Player status information, which is that. So, whether he's ineligible for a match, whether he's learning, whether he's wanted by another club, etc. His name, which is obviously something that you have to have so you know who you're talking about. Uh, his position that he plays. His morale, his last five games. His condition, appearance, goals, average rating. Well, that's a decent amount of information, but let's see if we can get some more information in there. Obviously with this you can have uh, a lot of stats, so you can, you can choose here what sort of stuff that you... You can kind of thin down the list a little bit, because there is a lot of information there. So, let's go to... Let's see what information would be handy. Well, let's see. What about passes? I'd like to see how many passes that my team has made. Or my players have made. So, passing attempts. That'd be handy. Um, passing attempts per 90 minutes, possibly. Pass completion rate. That'd be good information to have. And let's say passing passes completed per 90 minutes. Now, obviously with this, you can actually move it around to as you want to. So you might want appearances, goals, and average rating at the end. So you can move this stuff up let's just keep this so it's in the same order, so pass attempts, pass attempts per 90 minutes, pass completion rate, and passes completed per 90 minutes. Let's have a look to see what that looks like. Okay, so with this this will give you your total passes attempt by the guy and his pass attempts per 90 minutes, his pass completion rate, and his pass completion rate per 90 minutes. So with this, you can actually get a good idea of what he might be good at. So you can see how many passes the guy is trying to make. So let's take Anderson Silva for example. So he's made 699 pass attempts, and he's made 37.31 pass attempts per 90 minutes. Um, his pass completion rate overall for that is 85%. His pass completion rate per 
90 minutes is 31.87 percent. Might want to tweak this a, a little bit. Let's try and keep the two together. There we go. So now we have passes attempted plus is completed ratio and for the 90 minutes we have those two together. That's a lot of information. You can now look at this and see how good the guy might be at passing. And the reason why this might be important is, let's look at say for example your defenders. So this guy has had a 66% pass completion rate and that you can tell is that he doesn't have great passing. He has okay passing but not great passing compared to some of the other players out there. Um, and with something like that you can then possibly have a look and say well he's not a great passer it might be worthwhile considering giving him a player preferred move of play short simple passes. Um, if you don't want to spend the time to do that you might then want to consider going into your tactic. And with say if he was there actually I'll put him player instructions show instructions this guy here what you might want to consider doing is reducing the range of his passing you might want to change it maybe from a central defender to a limited defender his idea being is that he he's basically just trying to get the ball out of danger um, and you can see with that that the attribute that he needs is pretty much marking, tackling, positioning, determination, strength, and jumping. And that's it. You know, whereas if you have him as a central defender, um, he needs to worry about heading, composure, decisions, and a lot more important stuff. So that's something that's worthwhile looking at. Y you can also see that with this, you can see which of your midfielders, for example, is doing doing well, which one has a good pass completion rate. And you can obviously then see what they might need to work on. If someone has a very low pass completion rate, you might consider training them in passing just to get their get their stat up. So that's one aspect. Let's look at tackling. Because obviously tackling is a more important issue for defenders than it is your midfielders. So let's see. Tackle attempts, tackle completion rate tackles completed, tackles per game. Please note if you choose something like tackling that will be uh, his tackling stat rather than his um, uh, you know how many tackles that he does. So let's move that up so we then have and you don't have to put all of this information in. It's really down to you on what information that you want to have. So, as you can see now, we're getting a lot more information here. Um, we've already talked about the passes. So, tackles attempted, tackled completion rate, tackles completed, which is obviously a very important one for your defenders. You know, it's it's all one good for him to do a lot of tackles, and you know, if he's not completing them or if he's not winning them, then that could be a problem because obviously, his tackles completed and winning is two different situations. You know, you can see here straight away which people have, you know, a high amount of tackles won. Like this guy has he's attempted a lot of tackles and he's won 87 of them, which is a pretty good, pretty good ratio. Now, <clears throat> the other thing to take into account is obviously that that information there on its own isn't really worthwhile because it, it doesn't really tell you how big of a sample rate it is. He might have 92% tackles completed but he's only made 13 tackles but it's a pretty good return on investment with only 13 tackles and you can see with this you know for someone who's only got 10 in tackling and 9 in marking it's not bad this guy's much more of an offensive minded uh, defender um, so obviously he'd have to improve a lot you would probably find that if it, those numbers had gone up to 114 tackles attempted that ratio is going to go down a lot. So you are it's not just, you know, the percentage you have to take into account, you have to take into account how many attempts that he's made as well. And the same with passes, you know. Someone might have a very high pass completion rate, but in this case he's only made thirty four passes. Whereas this guy, for example, an eighty two percent 
pass completion rate is much more impressive because the amount of passes that he's he's made. Once again, those numbers might fluctuate depending on the style of football that you're playing. Um, I recently changed from direct passing to short passing, so the ball is getting passed around much more. The other thing that you can do as well is you can obviously do this for shots, which is an important tactic for strikers. So shots on target, shots on target per 90 minutes, shots on target ratio, and shots per 90 minutes. And let's move this up. Now this is, I think this is going to be an important one, your shots on target, because you know, having lots of shots is well and good, but if they end up in the parking lot, that doesn't really help you a lot. It doesn't really tell you, you know, the information that you need. You don't particularly want your strikers to, you know, be hoofing the ball into the, the parking lot. So, how many shots did he take? Sorry, shots on target. Uh, 14 shots on target, which is by far probably the best that I've got in the team. Although in saying that, my central defender is 14 shots on target, but that's because his tactics been set up that the ball is passed to him because he's a good header and jumper. Um, how many shots on target per 90 minutes? Well, that's obviously something worthwhile have a looking at. Shots on target ratio. You know, how how good is he at actually taking the chances that he gets? Well, with something like that, his composure is low. So that's the reason why his shots on target per 90 minutes is low. If his composure was higher, then it would be a much higher number. Shots per 90 minutes, how many actual shots, whether they miss the net or not, is he taking? Um, how many appearances and how many goals does he have? So with something like this, you get a pretty broad range of information that's available. Um, so not only do you have the information of the last five games, you can even take that out if you need it. If you don't have the amount of real estate here, and you can obviously resize the windows as well to change them to what you need. Once again, you don't have to put all this information in. You might only do passes per. You might only do the 90 minutes option, um, just because. You know, the rest of the information is a bit overkill. You might not want all of that. Um, but the options are there. So I've just loaded up my uh, Sheffield Wednesday save here. Um, where the quality of the players I have is much better than on my Santo Andre save. Uh, once again, we've got exactly the same views we had before. Uh, let me just. There we go. Uh, so this one, you can see, obviously, the passes attempted is much higher. Obviously, a lot more games have been been played. Uh, you got your pass completion rate, your passes attempted per 90 minutes, and completed per 90 minutes. Um, so with something like this, you can. I wonder if there's a. I don't know if there's a pass completion rate percentage. No. Okay. Well, pretty much with this, you can see, you can get an idea of, you know, how with the better players across the board, they have much better passing. So, for example, let's take Claudio, who's sort of my playmaker, who has um, tries killer balls often. So his pass completion rate is 84 percent, um, and he's made 1,146, pretty much almost the top uh, passer in the team. And his passage, passes attempts per 90 minutes is 41. And for example, my right back has 58. Uh, one of my central, my other right back story has 59. And his pass completion rate, you can get a good eye, idea there of how much better the passing is once you get to higher levels. Like with this guy, he's got a, a 19 in passing, a 15 in decisions, composure, anticipation, technique, um, and all those factors take into account how good he is at passing. Once again with tackles, uh, you can have a look to see how many tackles attempts, how many tackles completed, how many tackles won. So for example this guy who's my youngster who's turning into a very good player, you know, he's got very good marking, positioning, composure, decisions, and he needs a little bit of work on, and his tackling needs a little bit of work on.
lock on. Um, but you can see that, you know, he his tackle completion rate is 54%, um, which isn't, you know, which isn't a stellar number, but you know, it's not bad. And I'm sure if we looked at heading, his heading might be actually a little bit better than his his tackling. Um, so you can see that's something that needs to be worked on, especially compared to something like this guy whose tackling is 16 and his marking is, is 16 and his his stats are are much better uh, once again with your shots uh, this guy who's probably one of my better strikers out there um, how many shots he had, how many shots on target uh, how many shots per 90 minutes with 5 which is actually pretty good uh, how many appearances and goals he's had etc so hopefully this this will start giving you a lot of information on you know what your team is capable of doing. Uh, the other thing that's worthwhile looking at is team report, which is something that doesn't seem to be used quite a lot. Uh, goal analysis, you can get a good idea of uh, where you, what times you score your goals, what sort of goals they are, so you can see with place shots, 63 of them, the bulk of that have come from Lapa because he has place shots learned. Uh, headers, free kicks. So this gives you a very good breakdown of sort of all your competitions. You can break that down to just domestic league, domestic cup, continental matches, etc., etc. Um, and obviously you can go for the last five matches or your last 50 matches. And this also gives you an idea of where your assists are coming from. You can see with this the midfield is our main source of of goals coming in. Uh, and once again, this will let you know how your how you actually got your assists. How many of them are passes, corners, free kicks, long balls, opposition mistakes, etc., etc. Uh, and this will sort of help you break down where your uh, where you're actually getting your your goal from your goals from. Uh, tactic analysis tells you the, the um, tactics that you've used, how many times you've used it, how many times you started with it, how many you scored, conceded, uh, how many goals, how often you scored goals, how often you've conceded goals. Um, it sort of gives you a little breakdown of it. Your tactics face gives you an idea of you know how many times you played different tactics and how you fared against them. Um, the last match gives you a breakdown of what your stats were, uh, how many goals were scored, etc, etc. Uh, team comparison against sort of everyone else, so your average age, uh, the height, sort of in all positions, how you rate for your team rating for things like passing and first touch decisions, etc, etc. So it might give you something to actually have a look at to see where you might be a little bit weaker. Um, things like handling and things like that, uh, your defense, your midfield, so lots of information there that's hidden away that gives you an idea of how you rate against everyone else. And also your squad <coughs> squad depth. You can see how your uh, players rate compared to everyone else um, and see what you need to have work on. And once again, if you um, do have an opposition scout, this is the sort of information you're going to get from the opposition team. It's going to give them sort of their position strengths, their strength overviews, their comparison, uh, their tactical analysis of what tactics they like to use, goal analysis, so where most of their goals and that come from, um, whether they come from the crosses or whether they come from the midfield or, or whatever. So you might consider if I was facing this sort of team, you might want to pack the midfield to try and reduce the amount of uh, passes that they have from from here. I, I think most of the assists on this team come from my two central midfielders. Because, um, I mean, he has... Let's have a look. So in 18 games, he has 8 assists. So he's sort of my main source of assists in that. Hopefully this has given you a lot to think about. Um, hopefully it's given you an idea of what you can and can't do in a way to try and find out where possible problems might be with your team and how to fix them or possibly where you need to strengthen your team as well um, there's a lot of information that's out there that doesn't seem to be used um, so hopefully 
giving you a, a view like this will help nail down where your your weakest link is. I hope you guys have found this helpful. Once again, leave some comments below. Um, don't forget to follow me on my Twitch stream where I try and stream regularly um, with my viewer save and I take questions um, through the chat room. Um, so thank you again once again for watching and I'll catch you later.